What would happen if the world's most advanced computer chips suddenly got caught in the middle of a political conflict between two global superpowers? This isn't just a what-if scenario, it's already happening. And it all centers around a company in Taiwan called TSMC, which stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. TSMC is the biggest and most advanced chip maker on the planet. It produces the tiny processors that power almost everything in modern life, from smartphones and laptops to artificial intelligence, cloud computing, and even military systems. TSMC doesn't design chips. Instead, it builds them for other companies. Big names like Apple, AMD, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm send their designs to TSMC, and TSMC manufactures them with unmatched precision. This model, called a foundry model, allows TSMC to specialize in making chips with extreme detail and reliability. Over time, it has built the world's most advanced fabrication technology, able to produce chips that are just a few nanometers wide. That level of performance is hard to beat, and even giant companies like Intel have struggled to keep up. Today, TSMC makes more than 90% of the most advanced chips in the world. These are used in the fastest smartphones, powerful data centers, AI servers, electric vehicles, satellites, and defense systems. Without TSMC, many industries would slow down, or even shut down. Apple's iPhones use chips made at TSMC. NVIDIA's AI chips come from TSMC. Even the U.S. military depends on chips made in Taiwan. That shows just how central this company is to the modern economy and national security. But TSMC is now caught in a difficult situation. It's based in Taiwan, an island that China considers part of its territory. The United States sees Taiwan as a friend and an important partner, especially when it comes to technology. As tensions rise between the U.S. and China, Taiwan is stuck in the middle, and TSMC is right at the center of that pressure. The U.S. has been trying to slow China's access to advanced technology. This includes putting tariffs on Chinese goods, placing restrictions on companies that sell to China, and creating new rules for chip makers. One of the biggest moves was the Chips and Science Act, which gives billions of dollars to companies that build chip factories in the U.S. But there's a catch. Companies that take the money aren't allowed to expand their operations in China. This puts pressure on companies like TSMC, which is trying to operate in both the U.S. and Asia. The U.S. has also tightened export controls. Some of the tools used to make chips, especially those from companies in the U.S. and the Netherlands, are now harder for TSMC to buy, even for its new factories outside of Taiwan. Even when TSMC tries to build fabs in Arizona or Japan, it faces complicated paperwork, delays, and new restrictions. These tools and machines are essential to make the most advanced chips. Without them, production slows down. The strategy behind all of this is about power and control. The U.S. wants to stop China from getting the most advanced chips, many of which are built by TSMC. By controlling who gets the tools and materials needed to make those chips, the U.S. is trying to hold back China's tech growth while bringing more chip production to American soil. But this approach also makes things harder for TSMC and for the companies that rely on it, like Apple, NVIDIA, and other big American tech firms. TSMC is trying to adapt. It's investing over $40 billion to build a massive chip-making complex in Arizona. It's also partnering with companies in Japan and Germany to build new factories in those countries. These are big steps, but building a chip factory takes years. It's not something you can rush. You need highly skilled workers, complex machinery, a reliable supply chain, and a culture of precision. Even with money and effort, it's hard to recreate what TSMC has built in Taiwan. At the same time, China is working hard to catch up. It's investing heavily in its own chip companies like SMIC and Huawei's chip division. It sees semiconductors not just as an economic goal, but as a national security issue. Chips are crucial to China's plans for AI, telecommunications, electric cars, and military technology. But despite spending billions, China still can't match TSMC's level of technology. That's why TSMC is so valuable and why it's also at risk. China considers Taiwan to be a province of China. From its point of view, Taiwan will eventually be reunified with the mainland, one way or another. That has serious implications for TSMC. If China were ever to take control of Taiwan, either peacefully or by force, it could theoretically gain control of TSMC too. That possibility deeply worries leaders in the US, Europe, and Japan. But controlling TSMC isn't just about owning its buildings or machines. The real value of TSMC lies in its people, 
its process knowledge, and its connections to suppliers around the world. Without access to that network, even the best factory in the world wouldn't work for long. Still, the risk of conflict is real. The Chinese military has increased activity around Taiwan, and that sends a message to the rest of the world. Some companies are starting to look for backup plans. Samsung in South Korea and Intel in the U.S. are both investing heavily in advanced chip making. But neither one can yet match TSMC's scale, speed, or quality. Now imagine what would happen if TSMC suddenly stopped making chips because of war, sanctions, a cyber attack, or a natural disaster. The impact would be enormous. Consumer electronics would be the first to feel it. Smartphones, tablets, and laptops from companies like Apple, Samsung, and Google all use TSMC chips. Without a steady supply, products would be delayed, prices would rise, and shelves would be empty during major sales seasons like car companies would also face serious trouble. Modern vehicles rely on chips for everything from cameras to safety systems. Even a small shortage can cause automakers to shut down factories. In 2021, a chip shortage cost the global auto industry billions. If TSMC went offline, it wouldn't be a slowdown. It would be a full breakdown. Other areas would suffer too. Data centers and cloud computing platforms use chips made by TSMC to power servers and AI tools. That includes companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Services we all use every day, from email to social media to digital assistance, could slow down or stop working. Even AI systems, including chatbots and recommendation engines, would be affected. And then there's national defense. Many military technologies depend on advanced chips. These chips control guidance systems, radar, encrypted communications, and more. Without them, a country's defense capabilities could be weakened. Countries like the U.S., which rely on TSMC for some of these chips, would be especially vulnerable. So who could step in if TSMC had serious problems? Samsung might pick up some of the demand. Intel is trying to catch up. China's SMIC is growing, but U.S. sanctions keep it from getting the tools it needs for the most advanced chip making. No one else has the same combination of technology, experience, and production volume as TSMC. That means the world has a serious problem. We've built our global tech economy around one company, on one island, in one of the most politically sensitive regions on Earth. If something goes wrong, the effects could spread quickly and hurt almost every industry. That's why so many countries are trying to fix the situation. The goal isn't to replace TSMC completely. It's to reduce the world's over-dependence on a single company. TSMC is helping by expanding into the U.S., Japan, and Europe. Governments are also offering money, tax breaks, and support to encourage more chip factories to open. Intel, Samsung, and other companies are all building new fabs. But this takes time. Building a modern chip factory can take five years or more. Even then, reaching TSMC's level of efficiency and quality is incredibly difficult. You can move the machines, but you can't clone the people, the experience, or the culture overnight. If these efforts succeed, the global tech economy could become more stable. But if a crisis happens before new factories are ready, we could face one of the biggest technology disruptions in modern history. So now we're left with a big question. Can the world afford to lose TSMC? Or is Taiwan's Silicon Shield, the idea that TSMC's importance protects it from conflict, the only thing standing between us and a global tech collapse? What do you think?